Hey, it's Rob. I pray that you and your precious families are resting in God's peace during these very unsettling times. And I've been thinking a lot about our perspective in regards to injustice and the weight of the cross. The topics of ethnic inequality, gender bias, varied segregation and prejudice, social economic imbalance, abuse of authority, political corruption, etc., are only a few of the issues that will be continuously before us as we live in a fallen world system. And the harsh reality is that None of my greatest human efforts will ever provide a final solution. But prayerfully, I will learn a little more and pass it along to every generation. You see, we have our own personal experiences of offense committed against us. Some worse than others, some different in appearance, and yet they all share the same feeling that an injustice has been done. And we, as its victim, demand vindication, restitution, even reparations. This in no way compares one offense to another or bests one over the other. It's an equality of knowing that since the fall of man, injustice has become a part of our human experience, one which Jesus came to rescue us from. Well, sadly, the whole of injustice is perpetuated by the same heart that ate of the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden. That same fallen heart imparted to each of us has plagued the human race ever since. Rampant injustices among the whole of the human race continue to run deep from the poorhouse to the White House, We see it clearly today as we watch our fellow men bite and devour one another in the name of vindication for injustices committed. This is the nature of man. But this is no longer to be the nature of those who are redeemed. Protection of society's most innocent and vulnerable must be priority. Justice should be upheld, and repercussions for those violating such moral standards should be enforced. But in doing so, we must understand that the vindication that comes from the hand of men will never fulfill the payment required of the crimes committed. Only the blood of Christ can do that, which in fact, he has already done. Love one another. Treat each other equally with respect. Honor our fellow man. Celebrate our God-given differences. Help the needy. The brokenhearted are to be healed. Free those that are in bondage. All of these are fulfilled in the message of the gospel. And it is that message that the redeemed are assigned to live out. Within the gospel alone lies the power to save a fallen humanity. The penalty for the injustice I committed against a holy God has been served, and equality has been granted. You see, my feeble efforts to rectify the injustices of man have become a distraction to the fulfilling of the only thing he has called me to do, which is fully embodied in the sharing of the gospel of Jesus Christ and making disciples who will do the same. The Father has empowered us through his Holy Spirit to continuously manifest this living gospel, even if others choose not to. This was never meant to be easy. It's for this reason that Jesus told his disciples that anyone who decides to be his follower must take up their cross daily. Now, we tend to believe that this cross represents the the struggles we must die to while on earth. Maybe it represents our self-sacrifice to not do what we would prefer to do, or maybe not to say what we'd really like to say. Even deeper still, maybe it represents the persecution we must experience as Christ's disciples. Although all of those would be true, Christ has already equipped us to overcome these struggles by giving us a new heart and his spirit 
to do so. Rather, I tend to believe that this cross represents the most difficult part of the journey Christ faced while approaching the end of his assignment on earth. The very thing he came to do. For him, the cross represented God's undeserved mercy poured out on a fallen and perverse creation. It represented God's forgiveness for the offenses committed against him by those he had formed in his own image. It represented his unrequited grace offered to all who would repent of their offense and accept his sacrifice to cover them and fill them with his spirit that they may walk with him in the fullness of relational intimacy. When Christ requires his disciples to daily pick up the weight of their cross and follow him, he is referring to a complete paradigm shift. Through Christ, we have been delivered from the kingdom that demands justice, vindication, and reparations to his kingdom that grants mercy, forgiveness, and grace. As a follower of Jesus Christ, I am entrusted with the obligation to offer an undeserving world this same gift that I was granted. As a follower of Christ, if the cross I take up seems anything but unbearable, I am most likely not carrying it correctly. I'm required to daily lay down the old and take up the new. As a kingdom ambassador, I understand the weight of this cross is not in my natural man to bear. It is not in my nature to forgive the offenses and injustices committed against me. But through the all-sufficiency of Christ, I am called to be like him. Followers of Christ are to stand for God's truth, reach out to the downtrodden, and lift up the oppressed. We are to take up the skills and passions we have been given by our Creator in order to bring comfort to the hurting and be the catalyst of change for the upcoming generations. The questions to be asked are these. By which kingdom am I being driven, the old or the new? Is the gospel the birthing place of my life's message? Is the cross its instrument of declaration? If I am uncertain of whether or not I can answer these questions with anything less than a resounding yes, then I must rethink my motivation and realign my perspective so as not to be found lacking when I stand before God and give account as to how I represented his son and used my life to fulfill his mission. We're living in some crazy, emotionally charged, polarizing times, which is why Paul tells us to make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants us to do. You see, Christ accepted me in all my failure, my regrets, my shame, when I had nothing of value to offer him. He required no reparations for my years of offending him, nor did he demand payment to amend for the pain I had caused my fellow man. He only required that I acknowledge my failures and simply trust in Christ to expunge my debt. Upon receiving this gift, he requires that I do the same for others. You see, I'm no longer my own. I've been bought with a price. So I yield myself to the mastery of Christ alone. In these crazy times we're living in, I want to invite you to do the same. May God bless you and may you have an absolutely wonderful day.